This is Pony Prepper Bill. Today is Monday, February 22nd, 2021. And today I want to talk about these power outages in Texas and uh, could it be happening to us? With this power outage in Texas, uh, we got more than 3 million people were out of power in Texas. Uh, right now, supposedly 30,000 people are still without power as of yesterday. Now, I've been listening to people talk about they didn't want to harden their grid. This is their fault. Um, they could have prevented this. If you see the videos, the news footage, the stores are empty. There's no gas. There's no electricity. Nice, the situation I didn't think about. I'm at my local gas station. I've been to seven of these. Nobody has gas. So when you stop to think about it, there's no gas because it's not being delivered because of this. So what you have in your tank is what you're going to have to survive with. So I figured I'd come and get some snacks. Snacks. I figured I'd come and get some beer. So I come into my store. Let me mask up. Okay. So I come into my store and look at this shit. Hurricane, nothing. Everything gone. Even these things that people don't eat. These things are horrible and they're gone. You can't get propane. Some places you can, some places you can't. The electric bill. People were paying two, three, four hundred dollars for electric bill, and now they're paying five, ten. $15,000 for a All right, we're moving on from the Texas power outage to the Texas power outrage. Electricity supply, the orange line, and demand, the green line, has finally stabilized. But boy, wholesale prices for electricity in Texas got really nuts over the past several days. At one point, one megawatt went from $50 to about $9,000. Now, that doesn't affect you, the retail customer, as long as you're on a fixed rate plan, which most people are. But if you're on one of these variable or indexed plans, your rate and therefore your bill can shoot straight up. In fact, one woman messaged us and said, mine is over $1,000, not sure how. 700 square foot apartment, I've been keeping at 60 degrees. Another couple tweeted at us saying, using as little as possible, 1,300 square foot house House, and this is my bill. I only paid $1,200 for the whole year in 2020. They're at $3,801 now. Uh, then I spoke with a guy named Ty Williams. He has three different meters, uh, one for his home, one for his guest house, one for his office. Uh, last month combined, he spent $660. Now the totals for each one of these is more than $5,000 in this snapshot. At this point, his electric bill for this month is more than $17,000. And, you know, when I tell other people this, I don't know if it's not on the mainstream media, the regular news, but people I talk to that have regular TV and watch TV and the news constantly think I'm crazy. Like, oh, well, they're not paying that. I don't know where you heard that. It, it's, it's on the news. It's maybe not in my area in New Jersey, but, I mean, people are getting raped with electric bills. And uh, I have, you know, some... Some of my subscribers are in Texas and around that area and uh, Kentucky and stuff. They got hit with ice storms and power outages. I haven't heard from them. I don't know if they're still without power or not. Uh, maybe they just didn't, haven't watched my videos. But um, this happens all the time. Uh, there's power outages constantly. And it might be in small areas. Maybe it doesn't happen in your neighborhood a lot. We have power outages here during ice storms, snow storms, they go out here and there. But more and more, we've had power outages for no reason here. It, it was a little windy one day, and I mean, we had snow, like a, f a couple inches of snow. We had ice last year, and we had power the whole time. And then like during the summer, the power went out for three or four days. In the winter, there was no snow, went out for a couple of days. 
it, it happens more and more than people think. Uh, okay, like right now, there were 3 million people, supposedly, in Texas without power. That's three, well, it says more than three million people. In 1965, there was a power outage. The Northeast blackout of 1965. Okay, let's put this up on the screen. The Northeast blackout of 1965 was a significant disruption in the power of electricity on Tuesday, November 9th, 1965, affecting parts of Ontario and Canada Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and Vermont in the United States. Over 30 million people and 80,000 square miles were left without electricity for up to 13 hours. Okay, that was only 13 hours, but that was a lot more. And this was in November, it was winter, the cause, okay, the cause of the failure was a setting of a protective relay on one of the transition lines from the Sir Adam Beck Hydroelectric Power Station Number 2 in Queenstown, Ontario, near Niagara Falls. Now this was, you know, an electrical problem, I guess, with the relay, but it caused this whole power outage for all these states. Okay, now that was 1965. We'll move forward. New York City blackout of 1977. The New York City blackout of 1977 was an electricity blackout that affected most of New York City on July 13th and 14th. That was two days in 1977. The only neighborhoods in the city that were not affected were the Southern Queens, which were part of the Long Island Lighting Company system, as well as the Pratt Institute, uh, the Pratt Institute campus in Brooklyn. Unlike other blackouts that affected the region, namely the Northeast blackout of 1965 and 2003, the 1977 blackout was conf confined to New York City and its immediate surrounding areas. Also, in contrast to the, next, to the 1965 and 2003 blackouts, the 1977 blackout resulted in citywide looting and other acts of criminal activity, including arson. Okay, so... The 1977 blackout. What caused the New York City blackout of 1977? It was caused by stress on the system after a series of lightning storms in Westchester County, but human and mechanical error, per the New York Times, exacerbated the issue. So, it happens. Human error, whatever. Now let's go up. We'll move up a couple years. The Northeast Blackout of 2003. The Northeast Blackout of 2003 was a widespread power outage throughout parts of the northeastern and midwestern United States and the Canadian province of Ontario on August 14, 2003, beginning just after 4 p.m. Most places restored pa power by midnight within seven hours, some as early as 6 p.m. on August 14 within two hours, while the New York City subway resumed limited services around 8 p.m. Full power was restored to New York City and Toronto on August 16th. At that time, oh, at the time, it was the world's second most widespread blackout in history, after the 1999 Southern Brazil blackout. The outage, which was much more widespread than the Northeast blackout of 1965, affected an estimated 10 million people in southern and central Ontario and 45 million people in the eight U.S. states. So in 2003, there was 45 million people in the United States without power. This was summertime and it was only for up to four days. We are in the midst of what appears to be a colossal and history-making blackout. People trapped in elevators and buildings. They have activated the emergency command center. You're staggering trying to take in as much information as you can. Mayor Bloomberg's advice is to go straight home. The subway system is down. Ottawa is completely without power now. The lightning quick domino series of failures. You gotta go to the bathroom and you can't even go nowhere. 50 million people are thought to have lost power. In 2003, a massive blackout struck major areas of the U.S. and Canada and was perceived as a wake-up call for the nation. 
We've got a real crisis in our grid, and this is why, despite being a superpower, we have a grid that is comparable to a third world country, and that's not right. But have 10 years of planning and preparation left us better off today? I don't think you can ever say with 100% confidence we won't have a blackout. The blackout. Do you know what caused this blackout? Now, this is summertime, so, you know, people lost electricity. They didn't have uh, air conditioning, but it was only for a couple hours to four days. Hopefully, people watching this video are preppers or are into prepping or learning. You should have a couple days worth of food, backup supply, a way to cook, a way to get water. Um, now, what caused this blackout in 2003? Watch this clip it here. We don't know yet what went wrong, but we will. What we're hearing on the uh, radios is that there was some sort of incident in Ontario, Canada. There was a lot of finger pointing. U.S. officials initially accused a mishap at a Canadian utility plant. The mayor of Toronto fired back. Tell me, have you ever seen the United States take blame for anything? It took 29 hours for the power to be turned back on in most major cities. But the brief outage contributed to at least 11 deaths and caused an estimated $6 billion in economic losses. We were fortunate that the grid stayed up as it did and it didn't continue cascading any further. Engineers spent months unraveling the cause of the blackout and traced it not to New York or Canada, but to a downed power line in Ohio. The theory was it was a tree in suburban Cleveland. And we were like, what? The official report later found it was a series of human and operational failures that set the blackout in motion. A downed power line went unnoticed because the alarm system failed at the local power company, First Energy, and soon other lines were overloaded. When the line overheated, it sagged. And as it sagged, it hit a tree that shouldn't have been in the right-of-way corridor. Meanwhile, at the regional service operator, Midwest ISO, an employee had gone to lunch and forgot to turn back on the tool that monitored grid problems. So, they're talking about Texas, and they should have hardened a grid. They didn't want to do this, they didn't want to do that. How good is our grid? No matter where you live, this can happen to you. And it happens all the time here and there in little pieces. New Jersey, certain sections of Jersey go out, certain places of Texas will go out. It happens all the time, but not on a big, big scale. But when it does, the blackout of 2003, over 50 million people without power. That's summertime. If that was to happen right now, it, you can bitch about Texas, but right now with all these different states, and right now it was snowing, it was pouring, now it's sleeting. If we lost power, uh, I mean, we got firewood. My firewood is soaking wet. Everywhere I went, it was either wet, frozen. We're banging it with other boards and logs trying to get it in my truck. All our wood's wet. Everywhere I put it, I'm um, get it trying to get my firewood to dry out. We got it sitting on the stove, sitting around it. If you don't have power, you can't heat your house. These people in Texas, their pipes are breaking. They're not used to this kind of weather. And the government and the state's telling them to make sure you, you boil the water before you drink it. Several cities have issued those boil water notices. Uh, KPRC 2's Kathy Hernandez is live in East Houston this morning. She's looking at what folks need to do to stay healthy. So what's the story, Kathy? Boil your water. There you go. That's what you got to say, right? The city is working around the clock, and they hope by tonight they can restore low water pressure. Well, they don't have water. They can't get water. And how are they going to boil it with electricity? These people don't have propane. They don't have... I don't understand the stupidity of some of the higher-ups. Um, the woman that was in charge of uh, this, the Northeast blackout... She had no idea that people could get water. She just thought the electric was out. My water commissioner said, the people in the Heights have water for three hours. I said, water? I thought the electric was out. He said, Mayor, how do you think the water gets from the lake 
to the people in the Heights. You can get along in the dark, you can get along in the heat, but uh, water becomes a health and safety issue very quickly. Uh, going through the internet, trying to get some research on these different uh, places, the blackouts and stuff, I came across this blackout tracker. Uh, I'll put it up here. I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can download this PDF if you want or read it online. It's uh, Power Outage Annual Report, Blackout Tracker, United States Annual Report 2015. And it, it just, it's like a 70 page booklet and it talks about blackouts, how often they occur, where they occur. Uh, there's just, uh, it, it lists like state by state. Top 10 states eat and tracked for weather outages between 2008 and 2014 were number one, California, 525 outages, New York, 399 outages, Texas, 335, Michigan, 328, Pennsylvania, 294, Ohio, 265, Illinois, 251, Washington, 226, North Carolina, 225, and New Jersey, 225. They tied. Now, that was between 2008 and 2014. And that's how many outages we've had. Top 10 states with most reported outages. California, 7... This is... Uh, let me see what we've got here. 2013, California, 464. In 2014... 537, 2015, 417. Well, I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but this might be a good thing for you to download and read. It's you can go through states, through I mean, it's listed so many different ways here, but we have power outages all the time, and it's Texas. It got freezing frickin' cold. They're not used to that. Everything froze. So that's like a natural calamity, a natural disaster. The stuff that happened in 2003 was uh, neglect. Uh, supposedly a tree, a wire on one of these big things touched a tree, and that shorted out millions and millions and millions of people. Because, one, they were out, it was overlooked. An alarm didn't go off. People weren't trimming trees. This can happen anywhere at any time. Uh, I would, I mean, I've been watching other videos and other people, and they're selling freeze dried food. And I mean, I don't sell anything. I don't have any, I'm not affiliated with anybody. I would have a way of getting water. Uh, we bought, if you look through my videos, I have a thing on a manual uh, water well hand pump. I will look into getting one of them if you have well water. If you have city water, I would stock up on water somehow. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I would stock up on canned food, dried food. Uh, the long-term storage food I think is good. I think a tree just broke. Did you hear that crash? Let me pause this. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I had to pause this. I heard a big crash and a giant tree branch fell and landed on my shed and the, the pigs uh, overhang. And now I'm soaked. Now I forget where I was. Uh, the long-term storage food I think is good. We, we've bought... Uh, I forget the name of it, Thrive Life. I mean, we have some wise food. Uh, Augustin, is that what it's called, Augustin? <sighs> to me, I would get the big buckets, the five-gallon buckets of, like, rice. Uh, we have things of, you know, potatoes, eggs. You can buy meat, you can buy... I think you get a better deal when you get stuff in a barrel or uh, like a five gallon bucket of the, the different meals that you can open 
Uh, yeah, they're more expensive than I think, you know, if you buy cans of Spam and tuna and canned chicken. I mean, we go to BJ's, we buy like the things of canned chicken. And ever since like last year, I used to get like six cans of chicken, you know, canned chicken. Now it's like four cans or something like that. And, and it's more money. Everything's, you're getting less and you're paying more for it these days. But as far as like the cases of MREs and stuff, you're getting 12 meals in a box. 12 meals in a box for like 60 and $70. That's not a lot. That's like $5 a meal. That's, uh, sometimes you can get them cheaper. I just, I don't trust them. I just think that's a lot of money. You know, if you're single and you're by yourself, that's great. Um, you know, they're all individually packed. You take up in the carton, you know, and you can stack them somewhere and, storm but if you have a family or you know it's just you know you and your wife or if it's just if there's more than one of you i think it's you're, you're throwing money away or not throwing away it's you're spending a lot more than you, you should and then, then you can i would buy uh the long-term food it's freeze-dried you know in the buckets there's I mean, you can buy we bought fruit vegetables you know banana slices and you know big cans that'll last like 20 years maybe more uh, stock up on propane the little bottles of propane for your camp stove uh, if you get the big bottles I know that you can buy an adapter for the small propane bottles that you can fill the little ones back up from a bigger bottle that might be a good idea we had propane heat here in our house and it, it was just too expensive and we're burning wood but now the wood's wet and I mean all the wood we had it's it's gone and I keep getting wood it's wet it's frozen you gotta thaw it out so the stove it's heating the house it's not as warm as it used to be but in an emergency, we could cook on our wood stove. Right now, I don't think you could because it doesn't, you're going to be cooking a long time, I think, just to fry an egg because it's not that hot. So I'm just putting this out there that, you know, they bitch about the people in Texas. They want these people to resign from office and they didn't prepare and they weren't. This can happen anywhere at any time. All these were stupid, stupid little things that made these other ones happen. And the rioting and the looting, all that could happen anywhere. Coming soon to a town near you. And uh, either one in 2003, where half of the East Coast went out. That was supposedly one line that hit a tree and sparked and blew out half, half the coast. Well, who was at fault for that? So it can happen at any time, anywhere. And if this happens in the winter here, we're in trouble. So I would stock up, get water, you know, as, as you should anyway. But the way these st storms are going and the way this weather is, and the way this whole world is in 2021, now's a good time. Now, a better time than ever to start stocking up. There's, it's never been more, uh, there's really never been a better time to start preparing it now with every, the way everything's going. The last two years have been pretty, uh, pretty different. In my lifetime, I've never seen anything like this. So I would start, what the hell is that? I mean, it's raining like crazy out. Oh, it's sleet. The rain turned to sleet. The tree fell out there, but I keep hearing big crashes and bangs. I don't, I don't know what the hell's making it. <laughs> I got branches all falling out all over out here. I'm waiting for this power to go out. So, uh, the way everything's going, I uh, wish everybody uh, good luck. Start. If you haven't started prepping, start now. If you have been prepping, do a little bit more. And let's, you know, keep our prayers for everybody out in Texas and, you know, help your, 
your fellow neighbors out, make sure they're on the same page. And if you can, you know, I mean, don't hoard. When you go to the store, if you see stuff, you know, get what you need. Don't take the last one if you don't need it. Leave it for somebody else. Uh, but if you can, if you have the money, you know, put a little extra away, an extra can here and there in case, you know, a neighbor is out and needs something or the kids have food or need food. Uh, it wouldn't hurt to have a little extra so you can help other people out. You know, every now and then we'll see cases of uh, like ramen noodles or cup of noodles on sale. I mean, it's cheap enough already, but you know, when you go shopping, if you buy a case of that, it's not real good for you, it's not real healthy, but it'll help an emergency, it'll keep your, your stomach from, from growling. Uh, you know, and if a neighbor, you know, needs food, you know, you give somebody a case of ramen noodles, what costs you a dollar fifty, two dollars, even four dollars, it's, it's something. It could feed the whole family for a couple days, so. Uh, help everybody out as much as you can and prepare and uh, like and subscribe and I'll talk to you in the next video. This is Pony Prepper Bill. I'll talk to you later.